Hey there, crew, and welcome to another update on the volcanic situation at the Kilauea Volcano in Hawaii. I am geology professor Sean Wilsey. Thanks for joining me. Today is Sunday, January, what is today? 26, it's about 8.40 a.m. here Mountain Time, about 5.40 in the morning there in Hawaii. Um, have been about a week since I did my last update. I was sidelined for a bit with the flu, a couple days in bed, but I'm on the mend now. Looks like I'll make it. And so I wanted to catch you up with some of the things that have been happening in at Kilauea since my last update. I believe my last update um, was just before the fifth episode. And since that time, uh, between then and today, we've had not only the fifth episode come and go, but the sixth episode come and go. So right now we're post episode number six of the summit eruption, this phase of summit eruptions uh, at the summit of Kilauea. So this is a webcam view of what's going on right now. So you can see there's the vents here are still degassing. You can see some of these gas plumes coming out. Uh, there's still lava not too far down. That's what's providing the glow. And then you can see some of these twinkling lights out here on the lava flow field as some of that lava slowly cools. If we roll the tape back a bit, you can check this out during the day to get a better frame of reference of what's going on. So there's the, the vents over here. Um, one or both of these vents have been active during these various episodes and phases. And then you can see some of these glowing sections um, of the lava flow field here out on the southwest side of the caldera. Um, so let's go ahead and catch you up to date. It's been kind of, it's an interesting phase of eruptions that have been going on there. And episode five lasted about 14 hours, started on the 22nd, uh, about 2.30 p.m., ended at 4.30 a.m. on the 23rd. And then episode six started on January 24th at about 11.30 p.m. local time and ended the next day at about 12.36 p.m. So it lasts about 13 hours. So the, if you're kind of catching up with what's going on here, here's the larger um, caldera, also called Kalua Pele uh, for Kilauea. And then we have this more smaller nested crater within it, Halemaumau. And this is where the vents are or have been for these last six eruptive phases. So this is where the action has been taking place is on the southwest wall here of the crater floor. And so sometimes we've seen one vent go off during an episode, other times two. The north vent seems to be the one that always goes off. The south vent sort of comes and goes just depending on the, the vigor of the eruption. So let's go to our most latest USGS update from yesterday, Saturday the 25th. So this is just after the, excuse me, six episode had ended. So the eruption uh, paused at 1236. Uh, episode six began on 1128 on the 24th, lasted just over 13 hours. Fountains of episode six had been gradually declining throughout the morning. Lava covered nearly half the floor of Halemaumau crater. By the time the eruption paused, seismicity dropped, uh, inflation, or excuse me, tilt stopped around 30 minutes before the eruption paused. Overall, the tilt meter recorded about three microradians of deflation during episode six, about the same as episode five, and appears to be recording the start of inflationary tilt as of one o'clock. And we'll see that when I get to some of the monitoring data. So looks like we're setting the stage for uh, another episode, episode seven here, which could begin within just a few days. Uh, light winds, um, again, these eruptions are not a hazard at all to anyone. In the area, if, if nothing else, for tourists at the National Park there, they're quite the spectacle. You can see some of the lava from various overlooks in the park. So it's been a nice uh, tourist-friendly eruption thus far. Uh, analysis, this is the interesting part here. Each episode of lava fountaining since the December, this is all part of the December 23rd eruptive event that I mentioned. So each episode of lava fountaining since December 23rd has continued for 14 hours to eight days. So the um, length of time that each episode lasts, you can see, is, is quite variable. Uh, there's not a real, um, I guess, uh, pattern or tightly constrained pattern to it. And episodes have been separated by pauses in eruptive activity lasting less than 24 hours to as much as 12 days. And so there, there's obviously we're seeing, you know, repetitive episodes, but not with any, you know, cyclicity or or well-defined pattern. It seems to be a, a bit erratic, but this is sort of the range of values we see so far in terms of how long each episode lasts, eight days. Episode three was the longest one that lasted eight days. Others are as short as, you know, 14 hours or so. And then the time frame between those episodes 
can be uh, less than a day or as many as as much as 12 days. Uh, episode six began after recovering only thir three microradians of tilt, the amount lost during episode five. Only three microradians of deflationary tilt were recorded during episode six as well. So it's likely that another episode could start within one to two days if inflation rates are similar to prior pauses. So that's kind of where we stand uh, with the latest USGS uh, update. They'll put out another one, I'm sure, later today on Sunday. But I wanted to share, since it's been a week or so since we've gone over some of this, go over and look at some of the great photos and images and videos that the USGS has been able to collect. So this is from the 22nd, a few days ago. This is during episode five. Um, and this is a nice view of that north vent erupting while the south vent's just degassing. So just not enough pressure in the system or maybe some obstruction or something that kept this south vent from erupting and it was just actively degassing while the north vent was ma mainly the one putting on the show here with the lava output. So this is our view of what was going on during episode five on the 22nd. Uh, we'll go to the next little video clip, which is a overview flight. So this is from the 24th um, helicopter overflight of the area. <clears throat> and what you can see here is the two vents here on the southwest wall. So the north vent and the south vent. This is between episodes um, five and six. So nothing was erupting. They were just both degassing quite heavily. You can see the lava flow field here on the crater floor. Uh, parts of the old road over here that have been covered by a lot of this this tephra um and you can you know see they've formed these kind of crude spatter cone constructs the other interesting thing here is the color contrast the golden brown on the left upwind or downwind excuse me of the the vents this is mostly tephra fine uh, pele's hair very frothy lightweight gas rich particles that can be carried by the the wind and so those tend to be a little bit different color than the more dense uh, slightly gas poorer uh, lava flow field lavas that are making up this black there so nice contrast there. let me go back to that yeah as you can see the contrast there quite nicely um, between those two let's roll back forward here see what else they've got in this video clip so the two vents there uh, and this is just one of the lobes of the flow field out across the crater floor you can see some of the back a little bit and Pause right there. You can see right here some of the red. A little hard to tell when the, the sun's up so high, but you can see some of the active lava uh, maybe breaking out of this channel here, kind of filling in that area right there. So you can pick out a little bit of the incandescent glow from this flow field out at the distal ends of these lobes on top of the older lavas, which are a little different color there. So these are all available on the, on the USGS website. They've got great images as well. Uh, a couple I thought were kind of fun. This one, if you're if you're a photographer, uh, and into just the aesthetics. This is a pretty great shot here of a, let's see what we got here, sunset on the 22nd. Yeah, so USGS scientists out there doing their work, but you've got the the glow and the reds and the colors here from the active vent and the lava flow field. And then you've got uh, in this sky here, yeah, the setting sun, some of the, some of the clouds, uh, some nice colors as well. I thought that was just kind of a nice uh, aesthetic photo. Um, yeah, I don't think anything new here. This one's kind of interesting here. Stuff we see often in Hawaii, but they're starting to get, even though it's only been a few days. So this is the 24th, uh, that young flow field, areas of the flow field where the degassing is most concentrated. They're already getting um, some alterations, some mineralization of sulfur and other compounds along the flow field there. So you can see some of the yellow there on that uh, lava flow field where some of the degassing has occurred. Be interesting. Um, and let's see, we'll check out two more pictures here. Um, nice view there from across the lava field at the two vents uh, and up towards the rim of the caldera. And then let's see what this one shows here. This might be the same. Yeah, more of the helicopter view, kind of top down view. This is from, uh, oh, they've got a typo there. Can't be February 24th. This is January 24th, I'm sure. Um, they got the date right up here. So this is January 24th and looking down on the two vents there. But we think that the lava is fairly close to the surface because we have that glow there. Uh, and so again, we are sort of setting the stage for the next eruptive event. Let's check out the last week of monitoring data. So not a lot of earthquakes at all happening. In fact, the, the, 
these summit eruptions, these episodic eruptions appear to be, you know, relieving some of the just stress in the whole system. We're just not seeing even any earthquakes out here along the East Rift Zone um, or the Southwest Rift Zone. So it's pretty quiet seismically across the Kilauea volcano. The typical quakes we see out here on the south flank are from uh, as the as the volcano swells. This is where a lot of the faults are. Remember this this part of the volcano is not supported well. You've got the ocean here, which is eroding it, and so this whole flank of the volcano is slowly moving towards the ocean, and that's why there's a lot of escarpments and faults along this side here. Um, and so that's why we're seeing some of these earthquakes here. Just the response to the magma supply at the summits causing this part of the volcano just swell a little bit so not a lot of earthquakes um past week you know this looks maybe pretty impressive until you look at the scale here just you know it's not changing a lot you know some days you might get 30 earthquakes some maybe 10 uh, but the earthquakes really this is a better representation of the earthquakes over the past week and you can see it's just kind of scattered you know a few dozen or so per day um and nothing that's really jiving perfectly well with the um eruptive activity. The vents open, we've got a clear conduit to these vents, and so there's really no need for large amounts of earthquakes to break up uh, the rock in order for the lava to get to the surface. We'll look more at the, the tilt data. This has been, I think the, the ground deformation data is the most instructive at this point, more so than earthquakes or anything else. This just shows the summit tilt meter. So you can see it ramping up as we come out of episode, I guess this would be episode four, uh, and then this drop here, this is episode five. From this peak here down to this trough, this is the episode five. So here's the system pressurizing. As more magma moves into the system, the lava starts erupting out of the vent. That's this point here. Um, so there's a tilt, there's a deflation downward because we're moving that magma onto the surface. Uh, then the eruption ends, and then we resume inflation. And then here's our next one here. This is the most recent one here. This is episode uh, six that began on late the 24th, early the 25th, and then it ending right there. So you can nicely see those two uh, well, eruptive episodes showing up on the tilt meters here. Green line is just the tilt out on the East Rift Zone. It's mostly unchanged. It's, uh, it, there's a slow kind of downward trend to it, but it's, it's mostly unchanged. And certainly there's no earthquakes out there, so there's no excuse me, no reason to think anything's going to be happening anytime soon out there. If we look at the last month um, at the monitoring data, <coughs> excuse me, um, earthquakes again, not a whole lot. This is for the whole month, of course, so this is going to include more numbers of data, more days. Um, if you can see the earthquakes mainly clustered around the, the caldera area at the summit. Um, you can see some of these spiking up and down depending on the the phases we were in but again low levels of earthquake overall compared to what we're t we've seen in the past um, but the more important thing i think here is again looking at the the you can just pick out these eruptive phases on these tilt meter plots quite nicely so here's i think this is episode three that's uh, this was the longest lived one there is is ending slow inflation resulting culminating here in episode i think that's four episode five and then six you can pick out four of the last Four of these six eruptive episodes plot quite nicely there. You, another nice way to see these is looking at the gas plot. So this is how much gas sulfur dioxide is coming out of the summit area. And all these spikes here are coinciding with uh, mostly, especially the high ones, when there's the initial one there on the 28th of, uh, that was actually the 23rd, but it's one of those episodes right there. Um, and you can see these coincide somewhat with when we have these eruptive episodes as well. And then the last thing here is I did uh, to try to make this a little bit easier. <coughs> Excuse me, take the plot of the tilt meter and then added these episodes in so you could see it. So here I've, I've shown in yellow episode three, which ends right here. Then the inflation trend that, that resumes. Um, and then episode four, which begins right here at the peak of that blue line. And then that when it drops to the bottom point there, that's the end of the eruption. And then the inflation and repressurization of the magma system begins again. And then you can see how, you know, small uh, time frame episodes five and six were. These were like 13, 14 hours or so, respectively. And so these were really short episodes. So 
Um, are they trending smaller? It's too early to say. I mean, it's only six eruptive episodes. Again, there's not much. You can see just there's not much cyclicity to this. There's not a real clear pattern. The time frame between episodes can be bigger. It can be shorter. Um, so we'll have to just see going forward. Uh, I'm excited, of course, because I'll be heading to Hawaii this week on Wednesday. I'll try to share with you as, as much as I can. Obviously, I can't. I don't have any better access than the public in terms of you know, I, I'm not going to be helicoptered down to the crater floor, I wish. Um, but I'll try to share with you what I can. Hopefully, there's a good chance that while I'm there for a week and a half, I should be able to see something from one of the overlooks. So maybe I'll do a little video or something from the rim, in addition to doing just some regular field-based videos when I'm out and about on the island looking at different geologic features. Because there's plenty to see on the big island, even when there's not an active eruption going on. So there's, there's five volcanoes there, each at different stages of activity or inactivity, and there's lots to see. So I'll try to keep you posted on, the, on these events going on in Kilauea. It's helpful to me to kind of stay up with what's going on as well, but I wanted to catch up because I had part of this week was lost to being sick, and so this was mostly just to catch up with where things were going. So uh, hopefully that works for you, and appreciate your support of the channel. Thanks to all who are helping out here. And we'll see you next time for another update. Take care.